What's up fam, it's RJ Young, I am not on a step mill. Today, I wanted to recap Baker Mayfield's historic Heisman win to give OU number six for number six for six is so savage. So I want to unpack some numbers around the voting and unpack some numbers around just how great Baker Mayfield is in a statistical sense. Also, shout out to Lloyd Martin Jr. over at Facebook Group Center Ball Talk. I'm also going to tell you about one sports writer who chose to publish a column saying why he left Baker Mayfield off of his ballot for reasons that just blew my mind. All right, if you're new to the channel or this is your first time here, consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time. All right, bumper. Just snap the damn ball, RJ. So you may remember a video from weeks past when I told you about an offshore sports book called Bovada, which took Baker Mayfield off the board, took the Heisman odds off the board because they've already called it for Baker Mayfield and they didn't want to lose any more money on this than they're already going to. That's how much people expected Baker Mayfield to win the Heisman Trophy and that was even before OU made it into the college football playoff. Even as Baker Mayfield and Lincoln Riley continue to carry Mike Stoops' dead corpse. So when the ballots were finally in, it was really no question about whether or not Baker was going to win, it was going to be about how much. And that's what I want to get into first. So the first number I want to give you is 732. That is how many first place votes Baker got from Heisman voters. If you take into account the Heisman voting ranking system where you receive more points for the higher your vote, Baker Mayfield received 86% of all the possible points among the finalists. In fact, Baker Mayfield's 2,398 points ranks him third behind Oregon quarterback Marcus Mariota who received 90.9% .9 of the vote and Ohio State quarterback Troy Smith who received 91.6% of the vote. Okay, asterisk time. Quite technically, all of those guys finished behind Reggie Bush, who received 91.7% of the vote when he won the Heisman that was vacated, and I'm not supposed to be talking about because it doesn't exist, but it does exist, but it kind of doesn't exist, because we live in this world where you kind of want to get rid of somebody's legacy because they did something that offends your personal census. Anyway, moving on. So all of that is really interesting when you realize that there are 929 Heisman ballots. Only 898 of those ballots were returned. And 51 of those ballots left Baker Mayfield off of the ballot completely. Okay, rant time. Why in the blue hell do you need 900 plus people to vote on the Heisman Trophy winner? Heisman winners, fine. But there are quite frankly some people, particularly in the media, who don't need Heisman votes. They turn it into this political circus where you can do stuff like leave one of the college football greats off of your ballot for no other reasons than, you know, I don't like him. What? Come on, man. I'm not talking about the people who didn't put him first. I'm not talking about the people who didn't put him third. I'm talking about the people who didn't put him on the ballot at all. Like, why is that allowed? Why doesn't the Heisman Foundation go through and vet these ballots to look at who the quacks are who get votes in this thing? There's too much money. There's too much prestige. There's too much of my own personal emotion wrapped up in that trophy for you to allow yahoos to go voting on it that don't even have the good sense to put Baker Mayfield on their ballot when he's quite clearly not just the best college football player in the country, but one of the best college football players of all time. But Baker Mayfield handled all of this like a G. I enjoyed the blue suit. I enjoyed that Lamar Jackson dressed like an ice cream cone, probably knowing he wasn't going to win the Heisman because not all superheroes wear capes, fam. Not for nothing, but if I'm Lamar Jackson, I'm sitting pretty because I already got a Heisman trophy. What I need were two. Plus, I wouldn't be surprised to find out Lamar Jackson cast his vote for Baker Mayfield just because he could say that about himself. I've already won this trophy. You can have it. But real quick, I really wanted to try to find out who these 51 people are who turned in their ballots, who didn't put Baker Mayfield on their ballots. So I could think of some folks, but the person that I wanted to know the most about was OJ, as in OJ Simpson, as in the juice, be loose, as in did time for robbery. But still, 1968 Heisman Trophy winner, and to a lot of people, one of the best running backs who ever lived. I think he did something kind of significant in 1994, too. Um, mm. I'm missing what that is. Maybe you can tell me about it. I'm sure there was something that he did in 1994. I, I just, you know, must not have been that big a deal because I don't remember. <sighs> anyway, OJ kind of told it himself when TMZ thought to ask him that question well in advance. And the first words out of his mouth were, I thought it was going to be Lamar Jackson, Sam Darnold, and Saquon Barkley. Wait, Sam Darnold? And then later he mentions, oh yeah, we got this guy Mayfield and this other guy Bryce Love. Bro, don't let me find out you put Sam Darnold on your ballot instead of Baker Mayfield. It ain't going to just be me coming to get you. It's going to be all of us. Also, how about the fact that OJ Simpson is allowed to keep his Heisman ballot, even though 
he was tried for murder and acquitted and then convicted of robbery got nine years but that man gets to keep his Heisman ballot which makes me wonder if, if Reggie Bush gets to keep his Heisman ballot also makes me wonder was everybody else making such a big deal about Baker Mayfield holding his Mayfields instead of maybe looking around going, what other ex-cons got Heisman ballots? You know, priorities. Speaking of Lamar Jackson, I thought it was cool that Baker Mayfield not only beat him this year, but he beat him in a year you could arguably say Lamar played better than in the year he won his Heisman Trophy. So peep game. In 2016, Lamar Jackson completed 56% of his passes. In 2017, he completed 60% of his passes. Now think about this. Through 13 games last season, Lamar Jackson threw for 3,543 yards. Through 12 games this season, he's thrown for 3,489 yards. Through 13 games last season, he threw 30 TDs. Through 12 games this season, he's thrown for 25. Through 13 games last season, he had 9 total picks. Through 12 games this season, he has just 6. Through 13 games last season, he averaged 7.1 yards per attempt, and that's including sacks. In 2017, he managed to be responsible for 8 yards per attempt. So these are all things to keep into account when you're talking about Baker Mayfield winning the Heisman Trophy. It's not just that he beat Action Jackson, it's that he beat probably a better version of Action Jackson that won the Heisman in 2016. And then looking at the 10 players who got first place votes, I gotta say, seeing Mason Rudolph's name up there gave me pause. And he didn't get not one, but two first place votes. From who? Barry Sanders? However, I found something cool to pull from the 10 players who received the most points in this year's Heisman Valley. With Roquan Smith finishing 10th, and Baker Mayfield winning the Heisman, OU and Georgia are going to have the only two Heisman finalists in a national semifinal this year. Which is another way of saying, Clemson, you're trash! trash. And Alabama, you're trash, trash too. too! All this talk about Minka Fitzpatrick being able to play six DB positions, and he didn't even make the top 10 in points. They are 870 media members who vote on the Heisman. So the chances of Mike Gundy having voted for Mason Rudolph are out. However, there's some Homer radio up there in Stillwater, which means they'll probably put Mason Rudolph ahead of Doc Blanchard, given the opportunity. But back to an appreciation of Baker Mayfield. Think about it, in three years, this man has won three Big 12 championships, earned two college football playoff bursts, been a Heisman finalist three times, won it once, completed 71% of his passes, threw for over 4,000 yards and 40 touchdowns, threw just five picks, shattered his own record of passing yards per attempt with 11.8, on top of 16.6 yards per completion, a QB rating of 203.8, and also picked up 310 yards rushing and five TDs on the ground. Over the course of his college career, Baker Mayfield has thrown for over 14,000 yards and 129 touchdowns. And this stat is how we know Baker Mayfield has won the all-time college greats. He's just the seventh player in college football history to finish in the top five of the Heisman balloting three times. You know who the other guys are? Archie Griffin, Glenn Davis, Doc Blanchard, Dope Walker, Herschel Walker, and some dude named Tebow. But since we're keeping score, and we are because this, this is a football channel, channel, I think it needs to be mentioned that Baker Mayfield never finished lower than fourth in the Heisman balloting, where Tebow finished fifth at least one year. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Bryce Love finished second after an outstanding year. He has 1,973 yards rushing, and if he didn't miss the Oregon State game, he probably gets over 2,000. Also, one of the things we learned from that Heisman Trophy presentation last night is that Bryce Love is one hell of a human being, and we need great human beings on this planet. So Waco Tribune Herald sports editor Bryce Cherry chose to publish a column in the Sunday paper about why he left Baker Mayfield off his ballot altogether. And he opened his column by talking politics, which I hate having in my college football. Don't bring your politics to my college football. That's why I love scoreboards. We get to see exactly who's right and who's wrong by the score. But after four painfully constructed and agonizing paragraphs, he finally got to his argument, and I'm going to read it aloud to you word for word. It's spelled out right there in the first sentence of the mission statement of the Heisman Trust, Cherry wrote. The Heisman Memorial Trophy annually recognizes the outstanding college football player whose performance best exhibits the pursuit of excellence with integrity. When it came to Mayfield, it's the last word that stuck in my craw. Integrity. The quality of being honest and having strong moral principles or moral uprightness. Did the Oklahoma quarterback really best exhibit the pursuit of excellence with integrity? Not in my view. Okay, I can't let that slide. I gotta pick this apart. Number one, integrity starts by walking on at a program. If you've never walked on at a program, and I walked on to the track team at TU, you don't know that it takes all kinds of integrity and discipline to keep yourself in that place for that long. You watch your teammates get extra gear. You watch them 
eat at the training table. You watch them stay in dorms that are, quite honestly, nicer than the ones you stay in. And you still have to submit to the same responsibilities, the same discipline, the same level of integrity and principles as instituted by that program. You are held to a higher standard and you are given less for doing so. That's one way of demonstrating integrity. Another way to demonstrate integrity is to listen to the people who speak about a person when that person is not in the room. And every time someone speaks about Baker Mayfield, they have positive things to say. Whether it's his leadership ability, whether it's his moxie as a quarterback, whether his teammates will run into a burning building for them. When his head coach is moved to tears while talking about what that kid has meant to him at 22 years old, that's integrity. Bryce Cherry has made the fatal error of confusing confidence and self-esteem and self-worth with over-the-top bravado. Look, man, I learned from Mama Savage, who loved Reggie Jackson, who said, it ain't bragging if you can do it. And quite frankly, Baker Mayfield has never bragged about what he can do. He talks trash. We all talk trash. I'm talking trash to you right now on this channel. But if you choose to take it personally as me attacking you instead of me attacking your BS argument, then that's on you. That's not on me. I'm not attacking your character. I'm attacking this BS column that you wrote because too many times people are allowed to write this kind of stuff where their arguments do not hold water because the facts that you're using to support them aren't really facts, they're opinions. They're your opinions. You got a problem with Baker Mayfield being arrested in the offseason for public intoxication. Then you probably have a problem with 90% of the people who drink alcohol at football games. You think they all stay sober? You think they all don't get unruly? Look, I get that because Baker Mayfield is a public figure, a spotlight is always going to be shined on him. And there's right and there's wrong, and there's making mistakes and asking for forgiveness, and then there's whether or not you want the kid to actually do better. That's integrity. That is admitting that you made a mistake and then saying, hey, how do I do better? Help me do better. I will accept my discipline. I will accept my punishment for the mistakes I've made, but piling on in the way that you're doing in your BS column is not just making people angry. It's not helping the situation. You can't help the situation by not acknowledging that the kid has apologized every step of the way, done everything he's asked to do every step of the way when he makes the same mistakes a lot of 22 year old folks make, especially in college. So no, I'm not gonna let you ride roughshod over Baker Mayfield when he made a mistake, he copped to it, he served his punishment, and now you wanna leave him off the Heisman ballot because you claim he doesn't have integrity? Nah, man, a lack of integrity is waiting until after he won the Heisman Trophy to tell everybody why you wouldn't vote for him instead of getting way out in front of him and saying, I don't think he deserves it. Putting yourself on the ledge instead of waiting until the kid's got the thing in his hands and be like, I didn't wanna give you that. Miss me with that, man. This also comes from a guy who admits to voting for Johnny Manziel. And your excuse for voting for Johnny Manziel is that the university kept him under wraps? Well, Bryce, you're a reporter. It's your job to go find out what the university doesn't want you to know. That's the definition of news. So now you're claiming because you didn't want to work that that's why you voted for Johnny Manziel? Because OU and the beat writers at OU did their jobs in reporting the news about Baker Mayfield, which is not just the good, but the bad, you want to penalize him? Do you see how you've twisted yourself up into a knot that you can't get out of by publishing this column? Nah, man. Go back to paginating. Let your columnists do this stuff. Let your beat writers do this stuff. You don't need to do this stuff anymore. But the last reason that Baker Mayfield, of all people, should have been on your ballot is a child who's stronger than anybody watching this channel, stronger than me, stronger than Baker Mayfield. Her name is Mackenzie Asher, and he was able to make her day, and in so doing, she probably made the rest of his life. Being able to put a smile on a child's face is never anything anybody should take for granted, especially a child who is in such pain, a child who is suffering. If for no other reason than that gesture from a star quarterback, from one of the best college football players in the country who saw a child, a child in need, and wanted to do something nice for her. And in doing something nice for her, demonstrated integrity. And by demonstrating his integrity, she was able to give him a gift he will carry with him forever. One that he passed on last night in his Heisman Trophy presentation, his Heisman Trophy interviews, and all night that that pin was on his lapel and further into the rest of this season. Because he's not just playing for the Sydney about there anymore. He's playing for the memory of a little girl. And that takes all kinds of integrity. All right, that's it for me. If you like the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow. Deuces.